acknowledge that it's okay that I'm, I'm feeling anxious and do all the things I need to do to cope with it and understand that, you know, we're in the middle of a global pandemic and it's totally normal to feel anxious and feel this way. And I can definitely see that some of my obsessive compulsive tendencies are coming out and um, I've been pulling my hair a little bit more than I had been in the past because of my trichotillomania. There's just, there's a lot of stress going on and um, all I can do is just go one day at a time. Sophie and her mom, Deborah, are joining us now from our cyber hall. I watched that video diary and not only are you an incredibly strong young woman, but to be so vulnerable and take us on that journey, why did you feel that you needed to share that at this time? Yeah, I think a lot of people feel scared to share their truth. And I think I'm speaking up for all the people who um, are fearful to talk about what's really going on and just giving them a voice is really important. You talked about the fact that with this pandemic, things are worse. You showed us your medicine and you, you even revealed that some of the, the behavior of hair pulling had resumed. Mm -hmm. Tell yeah. me in comparison to before the pandemic to now how things have changed. I think before the pandemic, I didn't really notice any of the symptoms in my everyday life. So I didn't really notice like overwhelming anxiety. I wasn't pulling my hair. Um, and I think during now that there's a pandemic, I think I'm noticing some of these behaviors starting to creep up a little bit. Um, and it's like, it makes sense because there's an overwhelming amount of stress that's going on in general, but I'm definitely noticing um, some more anxiety. How soon did it start um, to get to this level? Was it uh, as the news and the information just started building? How did it start? I think as soon as I found out that there were a lot of cases in the area that we live in, I began to be worried for my safety and the safety of my family and my friends. Ever when you realized that Sophie would not be returning to school her freshman year, did you start to worry almost immediately about how this would affect her mental, affect her mental health? I did. I realized that one of the best things for her about college was uh, being busy almost all the time. So between classes, sports, socialization, uh, resting, which I guess happened every once in a while, it was keeping her busy and it was keeping her mind busy. And once she came home, we knew that there wouldn't be the same level of positive distraction. Uh, and so I wasn't surprised that the symptoms resumed. Sophie, there's already a lot of pressures we know, as your mom pointed out, you're a freshman, college, Duke, this hugely prestigious school, to get in that university alone is a, a huge amount of pressure. Did that add to the anxiety, now the unknown of when you'll go back or if you can go back? Yeah, I think the unknown was definitely the bigger part of the problem for me. Not knowing, like, am I even going to be able to go back in the fall is really scary for me. What's your advice, Deborah, for parents who have children going through this, whether they're in college or elementary school. I mean, we talk so much about the pressure and anxiety at all ages. What's your advice? You want to be somebody who offers an invitation to a conversation. So don't assume that your child of any age is going to approach you, is going to open up the door. You actually need to set the stage and be somebody who asks, and you have to ask more than once, how's it going? How are you doing? And it could change from moment to moment. Keep asking and keep being a supportive person in your child's life. Sophie, I'll give you the last word. I have a 14 year She's going to be mad that I mentioned her, my 14-year-old niece who I adore. Um, communicating with teenagers, very difficult thing. We know that. We're all spending a lot more time together, adding in the anxiety that's diagnosed and even undiagnosed. What's your advice to parents? What can we do better to help our children in the home, especially those suffering with anxiety? Yeah, I think it's really important for parents not to get offended when their kids don't talk to them. I think it's important for their kids to talk to someone and it doesn't necessarily have to be the parent. So giving them the opportunity to be open in a way that might not feel as comfortable to you, but is comfortable to them is really important for their mental health.